Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And um, ladies and gentlemen, and I don't know if you, you heard everything that Mr. Chumley had shared about the bill, uh, but I first want to let it be known there's been a lot of smoke and a lot of things going on. You've got five pieces of paper on your desk. You've got a lot of calls over the past week or so, and so all of a sudden everybody's got a lot of attention on this bill. I support this bill. Um, what we have is a new industry, frankly, coming into South Carolina, and I'm just going to make it as simple as possible, is it's a new kind of recycling is what I'd like to say. House will be in order. Mr. Ballantyne, I'm sorry to interrupt you. House will be in order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Ballantyne. So, so I want to be clear that I do support what this industry is going to try to do. And I know that it's growing uh, throughout our country, and I welcome it into South Carolina. But what I want to do, and many others that co-sponsored the bill with me, and, uh, and, and I apologize I didn't get to everybody. I had several Republican colleagues come up, kept getting on the bill, and I, I think Elizabeth got tired of doing four or five different versions of it, so I cut it off. But I do appreciate uh, many of my colleagues on my side of the aisle supporting, and I know uh, I have heard several of the Democrats support it as well. What I want to do is just try to strengthen it for two reasons. I want to protect our taxpayers in South Carolina, and also want to protect our environment. Now, for those of y'all that aren't familiar with me or, or, or might be new to recycling and some of this green stuff, I call it, let me kind of give you a little uh, brief synopsis. I'm going to get this done in 10 minutes, and then we're going to have a vote. 17 years ago, there was a Republican from the Low Country, Ben Haygood. And uh, Ben was a little different. They were, he's an attorney, so he was a smart guy. Um, but I noticed a lot of the things he did, it was kind of like the touchy-feely kind of green environment kind of stuff. And for a young guy coming to the General Assembly as a conservative Republican, a businessman, a banker, it kind of took me back. I'm like, what is this hey good guy doing? Is he kind of, is he crazy or what? Um, a few of y'all were here when Ben was around and y'all will remember Ben was a practical kind of guy. And so the more I was here and the more I learned and listened to some of these bills, I started to realize, you know what? You don't have to be crazy as a Republican uh, to protect the environment. And so throughout my career, y'all have seen some of the bills that I do, and I am by no mean, I call, I, I no mean, by no means am I a tree hugger. I don't have Birkenstocks or things like that, but I do understand how important it is in our outdoors. Um, my family and I are outdoors. I hunt. Um, I live on Lake Murray. Mental issues from time to time with a bunch of, excuse my word, a bunch of crap being dumped in our rivers and lakes, and that, that's uncool. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to stop that while also being pro-business. And so, you know, I'll mention this, you might hear this later, the conservation voters have a banquet that they started many years ago. And I was shocked one year for winning a, a green tie award. You know, every organization and group gives out these awards. And I know a lot of my colleagues on the right side of the aisle were thinking, well, that's, that's kind of weird, Nathan. I thought it was mainly Democrats that get that. Well, throughout the years, I've been honored to stand by, and I, I came after these men and women that I'm gonna mention, but there are individuals in the Republican Party that I don't consider crazy. I consider them practical. I consider them businessmen and women, but I also respect the, fi the fact that they can protect our environment when the time comes up. You know, you've got people like Chairman Newton, Chairman Merle Smith, Representative Herb Kurzman, over in the other chamber, Senator Davis, Senator Tom Young, Wes Hayes, Senator Campson. Those are some men and women that have won and been recognized for their environmental uh, work. And so, I don't view any of them as crazy, and I hope y'all don't view me as crazy. So let me, I've, I've talked a lot, but let me tell you what the amendment simply does. If you were listening to Mr. Chumley, what he was explaining is there's a new industry coming to South Carolina. I told you it's about some kind of fancy recycling, if you will, and it's called pyrolysis. And for this industry to come to South Carolina, they can come now. We've got rules here. This is DHEC Regulation 61107.2. Solid waste incineration and solid waste pyrolysis facilities. So they can come here now in South Carolina, but they don't want to come in under the guidelines that we have them. And I get it. Yeah, we just voted for the wines and they didn't want to come in under the, the way things were. They wanted to change it. So I understand that. And if we're going to get them here, we got to change some things. So that's fine. Well, one of the things that the Senate did to change that, and one of the things that the industry said they were okay with, is they were okay with this financial assurance. Uh, part of the bill. And what that simply says and what is in the bill as it's presented is that, hey, if this industry is going to come to town, we want to make sure that DHEC has, up until three years after we pass this bill, has the ability to say, hey, that's cool. Come in here to South Carolina. We just want to protect our taxpayers. And so we want you to put up a bond. We want you to put up a bond that you got to do anyway to come to this state. 
But the way it is now, DHEC can require you five, 10, 15 years later to put up a bond. So they want to change that. So in the Senate, and they're working on several other bills, not ours, by the way, of course, we heard about that earlier, um, but they're working on several Senate bills. And so they didn't really spend a lot of time or fight the bill. And so they just said, let's put three years in there. That sounds good. My amendment simply changes three years to five years and has a compliance piece in there that makes sure they're a good actor for five years. So let me break this down. Ideally, if it was up to Nathan Ballantyne, I would say that the three years or the five years does not start until the permits are issued and this industry is coming to the state. But that's not how the bill is written. The bill is written that it's gonna be three years from when we pass it. Well, I've talked to people in the lobby, as have y'all, and they're very good at what they do. But the one answer I could not get is, who's coming to town? What's the company and when are they coming? And I didn't get that answer. Well, I was born at night, but I wasn't born at last night, so let me tell you what I can assume. Nobody's coming here in three years. So that's why they're saying, hey, okay, we'll let DHEC for three years from when this passes, y'all can ask us to put up a bond. Guess what? This is just my opinion, but it's an educated one. Nobody's gonna come here until guess when? Year four. So then they can just come into town and say, hey, I'm here, and guess what? We're not gonna put a financial assurance up there. Why is that wrong? It's wrong because as great intended as this company is, or this industry is, stuff happens, and stuff has happened in our state. Mr. Speaker, I will take some questions if there are any. Questions, Mr. Ballantyne, thank you. Um, Mr. Burns has the first question. No, that's not who I wanted to question. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Mr. Ballantyne, thank hey. you for taking my questions. Yes, sir, Mr. Burns. We did a lot of due diligence, actually read the bill and discussed it at length in committee. And uh, I'd like to talk to you about some of the things we learned. And first of all, I want to tell you how much we appreciate you supporting this bill. Yes, sir. You've already stated it. And I appreciate you going through the efforts of uh, the bonding and financial assurance. Also in the bill that you didn't mention is that uh, DHEC can at any time, even after the three years, require financial assurance if DHEC finds it necessary. Do you know that? I understand if DHEC finds it necessary, yes, sir. And the other things, do you understand that they're permitted in the county that they'd be locating in? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. They'll have to be permitted in the county that they're located in from the county I would hope They'll so. They'll have to get air quality permits, do you know? They'll have to get water quality discharge permits. So there's, you know, it's not like they're just coming to town and not complying with the uh, rules and regulations that we have. And do you also know that we passed this bill in this house in 2019, uh, 63 to 27 with no bonding in that bill? And uh, the COVID took it down over in the Senate. Don't help them. And so, as you so do you know, reported, you know, there were groups that didn't want any financial assurance, zero, and the other folks wanted five years. So over in the Senate, they compromised, do you know, and a 38 to three vote in the Senate was held with the compromise to where we are now. But the point I'd like to make sure we all understand is, uh, just a week ago yesterday, Arkansas signed this into law. Arizona signed it into law. Oklahoma, Texas, Tennessee, Georgia, and Florida. Virginia, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Illinois, Iowa, and Wisconsin. All into law with no financial assurance and no bonded required in any of those states. Do you know that? Do I know that there have been uh, environmental mishaps in some of those states that you mentioned? Yes, sir. I'm aware of that. Well, we, we didn't have any testimony of any environmental mishaps well, I, in any of those states. I imagine y'all didn't. We, ha we had testimony where there's a uh, a fire up in Chester where stuff's mixed on a truck outside, nothing in the plant, and you had oil drums and all kind of mixed stuff. But uh, do you know in this industry they're insured 
It's a manufacturing process inside with sprinklers, with insurance and all of that. And right now also do you know that Minnesota, Michigan, Kentucky, Louisiana, all of those states are considering this bill with no financial insurance. Mr. Ballantyne, before you answer that, I want to tell you that your time on the amendment has expired. There are a few questions that you have. Mr. Ballantyne requests a second 10 minutes. Thank you very granted. much for uh, letting me ask you those questions. I appreciate your comments. Thank you, Mr. Burns. Mr. Jermaine Johnson is recognized for questions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> does, does this amendment make it easier or harder for these type of companies to come to South Carolina? Um, it would make it harder. It would still allow them to come in, but it would make it harder on them to be bad actors. Taxpayers clean up any messes that came from mistakes. Now, now how this is uh, structured, uh, is there any guarantee that this type of uh, industry would not just be dumped in my community? I don't think there's any guarantee. I think if they come to the state, they're gonna go wherever they can. What I think you would wanna do is what I'm offering is to try to have as many, as many guardrails, you might hear that mentioned later on, um, for protection, for not just the taxpayers. We don't wanna foot the bills, and you'll hear that there's been some other states that had some bills, and I think we had some bills um, that we had to pick up. Um, and also, you wanna make sure that they are gonna be good actors. We wanna make sure that not only can they have a wallet to cover when they screw up, or if they screw up, I would argue when they screw up, um, but that also we want them to not screw up time and time again. And when that has been vetted out, and when this new kind of recycling has come to fruition and is doing what they want to do, that's great. Let's move forward. Did, did you know, Mr. Valentine, that, uh, Representative Valentine, that I am definitely for making it more. Well, thank you, Mr. Johnson. Appreciate <laughs> it. Thank <laughs> you, sir. Did, did you also know that we have a lot of these environmental issues that are going on in Lower Riston right now that we are trying to get under control currently right now? And it's harder after the fact instead of ahead of time. And we need to be proactive as, as elected officials instead of reactive, cleaning up messes. Let's try to prevent the messes from happening beforehand. Correct. So uh, if, if somebody in here can guarantee that this type of industry would not just be dumped into my community, I will support it. Until then, I cannot support something like this. Let's put it in Wildwood. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Johnson. McDaniel's recognized. Yes. Hey, Ms. McDaniel. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Representative Ballantyne, um, I rise, do you know, that we've had several issues within my district in both Chester and Fairfield uh, where companies want to come in and put plants in place and um, cause damage that may be left. And do you know that we also already have VC Summer nuclear plant within my district? which means that there's a lot of concern as it relates to environmental issues from recycling, nuclear, and all these other different types of um, industries that could cause environmental damage within our communities. So my question is, we have been vigilant in making sure that we protest when these type industries come into our communities. So what impact does your bill have as it relates to these industries coming into communities that's already oversaturated with things that can cause environmental concerns? My amendment does not address that, but I think there's another one that would with some community feedback. Because another certain, amendment? Yes, ma'am. Okay. But so what does, does this one have? And, and I guess maybe I should understand it, but I'm not, as yeah. it relates to the role of the Department of Health and Environmental Control. So what this simply does, instead of how the bill came from the Senate, and I'll address the compromise that was in the Senate, okay. the Senate said three years. This just simply says five years and adds a compliance piece. So this says, hey, look, we don't know how this is gonna work in South Carolina, and we got a hunch nobody's coming here in three years anyway, so that's a nothing burger that Ooh. the Senate put on there. We're gonna put five years, and so if somebody wants to come in here in years three or four or in year five, we wanna make sure that you've got a financial insurance bond that the taxpayers won't have to foot the bill if y'all screw up. And we wanna make sure when you get to this state 
that you don't screw up. And then once you've established yourself, because we don't know you, you're new to town, you're new to the state. Once we know you, hey, let's get all these plastics we can out of there. Okay, do we have any idea what companies or if there are any companies currently planning? I, I asked for names, I was given none. And that was a concern to me. Okay, okay. Yes, thank you, Representative Valentine. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thanks, Mr. Daniel. Mr. Weston Newton, what a question. No. Oh. Hey, Weston. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, Representative Ballantyne, first I want to thank you for offering this amendment. Blake, I got some photographs, if you wouldn't mind putting those up um, for me, if you will. Ms. Ballantyne, are you familiar with the ABLE construction or ABLE contracting uh, environmental problem we had in, in uh, Beaufort and Jasper County? Sir, tell and us more. We started Memorial Day weekend in 19 when we left. You'll see as a picture on the screen, Blake, if you'll start scrolling through those. That's a recycling center uh, in South Carolina, um, in Jasper County. Unfortunately, schools had to be evacuated. It burned for a number of months, 60 feet tall. Uh, no financial assurances. So when you say that you want to protect the taxpayers, did you know that I agree and appreciate with that? And did you know that this site in, uh, uh, in Jasper County, um, when it combusted, and started burning and putting off those fumes, um, and they evacuated the schools and all the houses that were around it and the businesses. Do, do, do you think that had an impact on the livelihood for the people that live there? Yeah, unfortunately, I think it had a big impact down there. And, and do, do, do you think that this roughly $7 million plus or minus, there's about four and a half million left that South Carolina taxpayers are on the hook for to clean it up? Is that a, a, a good example of protecting the taxpayers? Well, no, not at how many was it? A couple hundred thousand of damage I had to pay for? What did you say? I didn't hear the, the financial well, the figure. The remaining balance is $4.5 million, and that's after the feds came in um, and spent the money that they uh, expended coming in for the, the, the cleanup activities as well. So after the feds pitched in to come help South Carolina out, we are still, taxpayers are on the hook for another $4.5 million because of... We didn't have a financial assurance. Did, did you know that the DHEC reports to Ways and Means that the South Carolina taxpayers are still on the hook for $4.5 million for cleaning up this little site uh, that's a recycling center gone bad? Yeah. Did you know if there were financial assurances that we'd have $4.5 million more dollars in South Carolina spent? Absolutely. And I think, you know, I, I, don't, I, I don't know, I don't want to speak for what happened there, but I don't think they planned for it to happen. You know, they're here to help us out. I'm sure they're trying to do a good job. But as I said, stuff happens. And when stuff happens, and we as elected officials don't put assurances in there for a period of time that means something, then not only does Mr. Newton's side of town or area of the state pick up the bill, all of us pick up the bill. Similar to how you heard Ms. McDaniel mention VC Summer. That was something where we should have done a little bit more work in hindsight. But guess what? We screwed that one big time. Now we've tried to go back and be reactive, but now we have a chance to be proactive and let's try to make sure we don't have to go clean up a mess later. We don't think these individuals are going, we don't want them to be bad actors. And I'm sure their proposal is not, I want to come to your state, I want to come to your area, Mr. Newton, so we can screw it up. No, we wouldn't want anybody to come in like that. They're coming in to help us. We just have to put some protections in there. And Mr. Newton, as you know, asking for three years, where again, I don't think anything's coming in three years, so that doesn't do anything to protect us. Taking that from three to five, I don't think does too much when currently there is no sunset provision. Currently, if they came in in year six, seven, 12, or 15, they would have to put up a bond. We're saying, you know what? We understand you want to change the rules. We understand you want to be different than what we have now. We're just saying we want to make sure five years from whenever Governor McMaster signs this, that if you come to town and start doing this, that our people are protected. Five instead of three. I'm sorry, Mr. That's Newton. all right, Mr. Bowntown. Did you know that um, with your amendment, uh, strengthening the financial assurances, protecting the taxpayers, that I'm in favor and will support the bill? Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Newton. I appreciate that. Thank you, Thank you Mr. very much. Mr. Speaker, I don't, I don't, I would like to, how much time do I have? I'd rather yeah, speak. about a minute. How many? A minute. All right. Well, y'all, I don't, I don't want to take another question. I'm just going to try to wrap it up again. Again, I'm in full support. You've got letters on there um, that say, hey, we need this industry in South Carolina. And I agree. All I'm asking my colleagues here 
is to be practical and let's have some financial assurances. Instead of three years, make it five years. And let's make sure that they don't turn out to be bad actors, whether by design, which I don't think, or by accident, as is going to happen in a new industry. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you, Mr. Ballantyne. Mr. Hyatt is recognized on Amendment 2.